one of my New Year's resolutions for 2022 was to take more pictures and videos. My New Year's resolution is to drink more water. My resolution this year is to start saving money. My New Year's resolution is to not get pulled over. One of my New Year's resolutions for 2022 is to eat healthier. My New Year's resolution is to stop manipulating men. Uh, my New Year's resolution is I want to like work on my style. I want to be able to dress better and look cooler and stuff. My New Year's resolution is to stop lying. To not pay my taxes. One of my New Year's resolutions for 2022 was to have a more positive outlook on everything. My New Year's resolution for 2022 is to have better grades. My New Year's resolution is to not eat out so much and cook better food at home. Professional metal sculptor Eric Strauss has always found inspiration in the imagery surrounding him. While living in LJ, Georgia, he has been able to create a unique juxtaposition between nature and industrialization. I went to Georgia Southern and have a BFA in fine arts with area concentration in traditional bronze casting and ceramics. I was basically taking photography for a core class and sculpture was across from photography. So I took a beginning sculpture class and by that spring quarter, dropped out of business school, entered art school, and that was 1983. And so I've been creating and building since, since then. He has been recognized by the Booth Museum of Art and even Sir Elton John, but his most recent piece holds the most meaning to him. Well, I used to live in Shakerag, which is in the Johns Creek area. I lived on a horse farm for 10 years there. My first thought immediately was revisiting my equine series. And I wanted to bring back just a little bit of what used to be in Johns Creek before it you know, became the Johns Creek of today. People have always adorned horses, whether it's a Native American painting a spot or if you went to India and it was super lush, you know, with jewels and beads and it's just kind of like a parade horse because when people are going to look up at it they're going to see something different all the time is what i hope that was part of my challenge taking my old style which is minimalistic stainless steel more like a line drawing out of metal and i wanted to come in and do something with more structure I wanted the horse to kind of branch up and then i started thinking of wind and water it constantly changes almost like a living organism till i'm finished because it it's just subject to change at any given time i'm trying to make a treasure hunt for the eyes you know visually to where there's a lot going on that you can't really see it all at one time the project began during the onset of the covid 19 pandemic so of course he faced some challenges it was more of a not really a physical challenge and actual structural working it was more you know, mental of just trying to keep, you know, the artistic inspiration and, and ideas. And, and so I started it at a really weird time. When you're creating art, it's really, when do you stop? And, and it's usually a deadline that makes you stop. I'm the kind of person that will, will work, you know, all night, the night before it, you know, just squeezing every minute I can. Well, I think public art helps define a community. It works in part of the history. It can be enjoyed by all people. This is something I can put my heart and soul in and that I know people will get to at least see it, which means a lot to me. Reporting for C100, I'm Stella Braun.
Oh shoot, I'm gonna be late. So sorry I'm late. I'm just gonna slide in real quick right here. Okay, so ignore that. He's just here for notes. Let's try to be on time next time. Um, I know this is a big, big murder, but I want you to listen. So the last thing before we wrap this meeting up, the most important thing that um, I'm sorry, this is gonna be off the books. I'm gonna need you to. Uh, I got it. Your number of the week is seven. All right, this is your boy Robbie G. And Callum Wunderlich. And we are your man on the street. Now, what is your New Year's resolution? Um, oh, well, I actually tried to stop cussing. I had to cuss a lot less. Why did you have to cuss? Was it like a thing you had to do? Yeah, it was for a lit assignment. All right, so what is your New Year's resolution? <laughs> you got one? Nah, I actually don't, bro. Why not? Because what's... Don't you want to get swole? Just... I'm already swole, bro. Bro, I know. Yeah, I'm already swole. swole. How do you spell centennial? This I know, because <laughs> I did this a couple days ago. It's C-E-N. T E N N I A L. Nice, good job. Let's go. That was awesome. That was, what does FBI stand for? Federal hey, so Bureau Intelligence. Summit. Yeah, yeah. Is that actually yeah, it? that's oh, actually no, yeah. Oh my okay. god. How do you spell a handkerchief? Bill Johnsley first. H N. Oh wait, wait. H A N. Yeah. C E R. C H E I F. Ten years later. Oh, so H A N D. Yeah. K E R C H E I F. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do this. All right, what is your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution is to continue to make Centennial uh, the best school in Fulton County and Georgia. We have awesome students, an excellent community, excellent parents, and I want everybody to know that. So my resolution is continue to uh, make our footprint a lot bigger, wider, not only in Roswell, but in Fulton County. Awesome. This is Men, your man on the street. With your boy, Robert G. <laughs> well, hello there. Well, I guess you came here for the talk. You see, when a mom and dad love each other, they... Oh, what? Oh, we're not doing that? Oh, okay. You see, I'm retiring from conspiracies. For many reasons, I made a lot of enemies with them, including the U.S. government, Frito-Lay, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, the entirety of Canada, the entirety of Russia. But you know what? I have another reason. I just can't come up with any more good theories. Think of it. There's no way the CIA killed JFK. There's no way Frito-Lay runs everything along with six other companies. 
and there's no way the MCU's on a decline, and there's no way the Earth is a sphere. We all know it's a cube. But you know what? It's time to move on to some new horizons. Maybe I should create some new content. Goodbye and good night. Your color of the week is Gryffindor Gold. Looking back to the beginning of 2020, you know, I remember in January, I started seeing stuff on Instagram about like, the coronavirus. And honestly, at first, I thought it was some sort of joke. Beijing has confirmed the number of people who have died from a new type of respiratory virus in China has now passed 40. I didn't think it would be a big problem. I thought it would just be isolated in where it started. And it eventually turned into a, a greater problem for the whole entire world. Heightened states of emergency across the nation as a number of coronavirus cases soars above 3,000. I remember when it was brought up to me, like in lit class, like I was just like, this is nothing, like whatever. And then I remember we had one week off of school and then one week turned to the rest of the year. Fulton County School District now is canceling classes tomorrow because a teacher has tested positive for coronavirus. And then we had the big quarantine year. The spring of 2020, online teaching was, I, I, I was trying to look at it as like, oh, this is this great opportunity and, you know, gonna make the best of it. And it really turned out to be something that I didn't expect and that I feel like I lost contact with a lot of people, especially the seniors from that year. And that was, that was the worst part of it. Having a whole year of really being in and out of school, like it was your choice if you wanted to go or not. And a lot of us, a lot of us took advantage of that and really did not learn much at all. And in, in, in hindsight, I, I, I regret doing that. It was definitely challenging. The learning aspect was I think the hardest for a lot of people, but in the end, it was it was very tough. It was it was really challenging. That's all I have to say. But when you think about it, the kids that are being born that were born during COVID, like that's all they know. And even kids that are like seven years old, you know, they don't remember. I mean, I don't. I can't remember that far back. But you know, that's how they're going to remember their childhood is being a mess and not being able to touch anything. And that's, it's really sad. It's just, I think it's very sad. COVID has ruined so, so much. And I hope that, you know, someday I know everything will be fine and well, everything will be normal again. And I don't know, I just, I hope we can get it figured out. So I've been recovering from my previous accident when I tried to fly, and I think I'm at a point where I'm ready to get up and instead of taking to the skies, I'm gonna go on a new adventure. I'm gonna sail the seas. All right, now you see, there are these things called boats, right? And what they do is they let people just travel across water. But my question is, how do they float? Because they're made of metal. And I don't know if you know this, but metal, it sinks, right? but these giant metal contraptions, they float. So someone on the design team has no idea what they're doing and I want to prove them wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build my own boat. So here, follow me. All right, so here is our design that we're gonna go for for the boat. Uh, it, it's a bit archaic, you know, I don't know if you could tell, but um, we've got a nice cardboard platform that I'll be standing on, uh, supported by styrofoam and pool noodles. Uh, so those are gonna help float, you know, float the actual boat. Uh, and then on this corners, we attached ourselves some empty water bottles, which uh, will be filled with air and, you know, what floats better than air. So that's for good luck. And uh, I hid an extra detail in there. I don't know if you could see it, but uh, you, you keep a lookout for that. We'll see if that ends up in the actual boat. But for now, I'm gonna go print it and I'll be right back. All right, so. Now that I've gotten all the blueprints ready, um, I wanted to see what a like professional boat man would say about it. So I called one in and uh, <clears throat> hey boy, howdy. Okay, so here are the blueprints. 
Let All me know right. what you think. Sorry, I just... just... Alright, so in the industry, um, usually we like for our boats to be, you know, able to float. Um, and this won't do that. Yeah. So... In my professional opinion, uh, this isn't a boat. Hey there, your bird of the week is a snowy owl. Hi, my name is Cody Gagecool. And I'm Maiden Owens. And this is your weekly update. First up, an odd attempt to encourage vaccination. So some German farmers arranged a herd of 700 sheep and goats in the shape of a syringe. That's right, you heard it here fo first, folks. But if I encountered that, I'd probably say it's a bad situation. In other news, Betty White's 100th birthday is coming up, and we're really excited, so we brought out some accessories for the occasion. Guys, bring them in. Woo. Happy birthday, Betty White! Um, my, my apologies, guys, um, and, you know, may she, may she rest in peace. So, we all still hate COVID, and COVID hates us, so... Dear COVID-19 at Omicron.com, would you please stop harassing my face? We all hate these creatively dumb masks. I kind of like mine. I didn't ask you! Just let me send this... Email, please. Okay. Well, in other news, we're going to have to get serious for a second. We lost a very great man to this school. So let's take a moment of silence to thank Mr. Surrett. Anyways, did you know we would have gone to the Atlanta Zoo for prom? Well, it's official now. So all the students will be where they belong. Nice! Sure, we can go with that. Anyways, this has been your weekly update. I'm Cody Gage Cole. And I'm Maiden Owens. Have a good one, Centennial.